Good morning, my friends and followers. I remain Edward Wasurum, the tutor in Edward's Academy. This morning, I will bring to you a fascinating development in macroeconometrics that has to do with the Medas regression. The Medas regression is a fascinating development in macroeconometrics because too many of our researchers find it very difficult to actually work on time series data and other high frequency data of low frequencies simultaneously. Imagine a situation where you are asked to run a regression and majority of your time series data are or monthly data while some are actually annual data. At that level you will actually have problem because you may not be able to to work on the uh, on the data set since they are not of the same frequency. So in the view of that, we have actually uh, observed that too many of the researchers have problem in estimating such kind of relationship and that brings in mind the concept of MEDAS regression. MEDAS regression is a fascinating tool in macroeconometrics that enables the researchers to actually combine series of low frequencies and high frequency in the same estimation. That means that researchers can be able to actually use annual time series data and uh, quarterly or monthly time series data in the same regression and it will be accepted. So the study objective this morning is to actually teach you how to run a regression analysis that actually involves the use of annual, quarterly or monthly time series data. Stay tuned to my channel as we progress. So this morning I actually will be adopting a study approach where I will look at how uh, the exchange rate actually affects uh, the Nigeria economy. I will look at how exchange rate affects our GDP. So to do that, the first thing to do is to open my EView work file. This is my EView work file. The first thing I go to file, you go to file, you go to new. From new, you maneuver to new sheet. My, my new sheet will be, first one will be annual. I now type in 1990 is my start date. My end date is 2020, 2020. The first series is GDP A, GDP annual. Then the second one, I go to new page binets. It go to specify by frequency slash range. You maneuver to uh, exchange rate Q, exchange rate quarterly. The start and the end dates remain the same without any anything. You click OK. So the next thing to be done is to actually normalize the time series data, uh, the annual, and uh, also to transfer the data into the EView worksheet. Rather, so transfer the data into the EView worksheet. I actually have my data ready in the cell sheet here. This is my annual GDP, and my annual GDP button is open. I will now pull up this to this. Without going further, I click finish. When I click finish, I click no. The data will be actually transferred to this is my annual GDP series. It's already transferred. Already transferred. It's already transferred. So the next thing to be done is to actually load the the a quarterly time series. I take the quarterly exchange rate series. I move it from SL a sheet to the EView work file. I click finish. From finish, I click OK. From OK, I've actually transferred or I've loaded the exchange rate. This is my exchange rate. This is my exchange rate series. I've also loaded the the annual uh, GDP series. This is my annual GDP series. So the next thing to be done is to equalize both the exchange rate and the a GDP series for them to be in the same frequency. So to do that, I have type series equal series G D GDP series GDP equal to at log bracket open GDP bracket close multiplied by hundred. I click OK. I've narrated a new GDP series. 
I go to next again. I click Cirix the ex arrow equal at log bracket open es arrow bracket close multiply by 100 generated new series for gdp a new series for for esr so the first the next thing to be done actually is to estimate an olx to go there where your gdp work file is is activated you go to quick you go to estimate equation you now estimate your first equation by typing the new the new series is gdp dgdp followed by space then followed by dgdp lag the lag value of dgdp minus one then you now include the second is the exchange rate work file the name of the work file is esrq esrq that is the name of the exchange rate work file by the exchange rate esr the lag value of the exchange rate it now includes divided by the lag value of the exchange rate uh, without changing any other thing the first equation is okay the method remains the least square estimation method the sample size is still 1990 to 2021 if you click ok you will get a result that looks like this this is the first olx results the first least square estimation estimated this day after 31 uh, adjustment if you look at this result the lag value of gdp is significant but uh, the exchange rate value is insignificant so to move on the next thing to be done actually is to name this particular result equation one name this result equation one because i actually want to forecast or actually want to actually predict the the future values of of uh, this particular series of gdp over time is equation one saved i will minimize this i will minimize this i'll move on again to quick I move on to estimate equation. I will estimate my equation. My equation is what DGDP constant DGDP DGDP log one negative one. To so this time, I will not activate the Midas. I'll go to methods. I move on to Midas regression mixed data uh, sampling regression i click here i will now estimate uh, in in the second box in the second box i will now estimate e x r q by e x r log one that is the previous value of the exchange rates uh, without changing the lags and leaving it at automatic selection i actually like automatic selection other than fixed uh, lags automatic selection my dash regression activated if i click ok i will get another result that looks like this this is the second result i have gotten this second result is in threefold is in twofold rather this is the second result i have gotten it's the second result I have gotten, like the first one. The second result, the lag value of the dependent variable is also uh, significant. Okay, I will now save this uh, second uh, equation or second result as equation two. I will save it. I will minimize it. If you observe here, we have gotten equation one and equation two. The next thing is to go to quick, go to estimate equation. I will now estimate my third equation. My third equation is DGDP 
DGDP DGDP DGDP followed by space DGDP DGDP lag one lag one activate the Midas regression button again and we now insert the name of the second uh, work file DGDPQ by sorry ESROQ by ESR lag one ESR lag one activate automatic uh, lag selection I'll go to option I'll go to Midas weights I click on step I click OK I've got in my third results like uh, this first and second results the lag value of the uh, GDP DGDP is significant I will name this particular result equation 3 I'll click OK I've got in equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 remember I want to focus I'll go back to quick again I'll estimate my equation for the fourth time my dependent variable is DGDP I leave a constant I come back again DGDP lag 1 DGDP lag 1 DGDP lag 1 I'll activate my Midas button again I will now come to this empty space I will now input the exchange rate uh, the exchange rate work file the name of the exchange rate work file by the name of the exchange rate work file I will now separate by or divide by the exchange rate the lag value of the exchange rate lag value of the exchange rate I will activate my automatic selection again I move on to option from option I will select better from better I will not change any other item here uh, if decide if I decide to change optimization I may decide to call uh, to select Newton uh, Ramsin my estimation covariance uh, coefficient remains at the ordinary I recall this an ordinarily square estimation EV supply without making any further adjustments here I will click uh, OK if I click OK say automatic selection is now allowed in this fourth one I leave it at fixed selection if I click OK I have gotten my fourth uh, result this is my fourth result I will now go to name again I will now name it equation 4 equation 4 I've gotten four equations so the next thing to be done now is to actually forecast I'll move back to my original uh, DGDP equation or uh, variable <coughs> this is my original DGDP uh, data I'll move on to PROC from PROC here you move on to forecast averaging from forecast averaging You'll be exposed to forecast averaging uh, box that looks like this. The next thing to do is to start with the first equation. We have equation one, EQ zero, EQ zero one. We have EQ zero two. We have EQ zero three. We have EQ zero four. These are the four these are the four results we've had previously so without changing any other thing in this forecasting section already the output forecast name is uh, the GDPF so the next thing to be done is to look at the forecast sample we are actually going to adjust the forecast sample to enable of capture what we actually want to capture because uh, we need to move from 2010 to 2021 so without changing any other thing if I click OK I've gotten my forecast this is my forecast my forecast summary this is my forecast summary 
forecast average dated on the 8th day of August 2023 time 055 that is a sample size forecasted sample size is from 2010 to 2021 included observation 12 okay this is my num my number of observation uh, of forecast is 4 averaging method is uh, actually adopted simple mean in this forecast okay this is my forecast uh, comparison graph this is my forecast comparison graph i actually picked my forecast from from 2010 <coughs> to 2021 and if you look at my my forecast average you observe that my at my forecast average is not far from the actual observation that means that uh, the forecast is okay the prediction is in order what I actually predicted is not far from actually what is obtainable so this is how you actually perform Midas regression uh, and also forecast uh, uh, the outcome of your dependent variables in my next video I will teach you how to interpret the results in, in, in Midas regression I'll also teach you how to use MEDAS a regression framework to estimate a structural VAR and a basic VAR. Stay tuned to my channel and thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel for further for videos on macroeconometrics. Thank you and God bless you.